Hello everyone, this is Kyle Lynch, the developer of Fluware. I'm just giving you a short tutorial on how to use the new second order image mapping calibration feature in Fluware, which is particularly useful uh, if the camera is not, per is not perfectly aligned with the laser sheet or you have a old lens which doesn't correct very adequately for pincushion or barrel distortion. So I went ahead and opened up Fluware and I'm going to go ahead and open up a f image file which uh, is a, bound a picture of a boundary layer this is just one of a set that we use to characterize a boundary layer for an experiment we have a combined image set here so we set it to combined alright and then we're going to go ahead and process it using the standard options pass 3, pass 4, almost done and what we can see right here is not too much it looks pretty uniform however if we scale it a little bit so that we're looking at the free stream portion only let's make this 5 to 9 perhaps and redraw you can see we have a, <coughs> a little bit more of a gradient as we continue Let's make this uh, six or seven and redo it. And yeah, here you can really see a gradient starting to appear. This is because the camera was not aligned with the laser sheet perfectly, as you can tell by the magnitude of the velocity in these two cases. We have quite a big shift in the U velocity, 8.5 to 7.8. This would really screw up the statistics if you were making a measurement. So what we want to do is use the new feature. We go to units. We click Use Second Order Image Mapping with Calibration Tool, and we open the Calibration Tool. This will pop up a new window, and the next thing you need to do is Step 1, Load the Calibration Image. Now I have a Calibration Image here, which is a, uh, a dot card that's illuminated from the back, but you can use any dot card. In fact, you can use a dot card with dark spots. You just would need to invert the image in that case to make the dots appear light such as this. Next thing we do is we mark the bounds of the useful area so we only want to use portions here and we want to ignore any anything that comes outside of it so we double click for each point double click double click double click double click and now we've established the bounds of what we want to look at. The next part we do is we mark the initial points. This is going to find the coordinate system and help give the uh, dot finding algorithm a good guess of where to go. So we double click once, double click twice, double click three times. And now we have uh, the points to find. You need to do them in this order. One, two, three. Now I'm going to go ahead and just give a dot separation to define the physical conversion factor. It doesn't have, we don't have to convert to physical units yet, but you can put it here um, just so that you have the conversion factor eventually. So I'm going to switch to inches here, and I think this was acquired with a quarter inch dot spacing, so I'll do 0.25. Oops. And I'll hit find remaining points, and now you can see it has found the remaining points using a centroid, uh, an intensity centroid algorithm and the mapping functions are listed right here. Now this is just a standard second order image mapping which you can find in Rafael and other uh, publications about PIV. Uh, the conversion factor now is listed as 450 pixels per inch so that just gives you an idea of what to type in if you need to do the physical conversion. Now if you ever need to start over you can hit start over. If you want to export these points to a file so that you can analyze them somehow perhaps in MATLAB you would just hit export points to file and you would select a um, you would select a place to put them. So now we hit OK and we'll be image mapping now. So we'll just go back and process process all files in this case just one <coughs> almost done and now you can see we have a nice beautiful uniform field the way that it's implemented in Fluware is during the image deformation step part of the normal PIV algorithm so it actually uh, in 
puts no additional uh, time onto the um, processing of the image. So it's actually very efficient and should slow down your processing at all. So I hope you enjoy this feature and I'm really interested to know um, if it works well for you or if there's anything I can do to improve this dialogue because I just kind of made it up and if you have any suggestions on what would be helpful please let me know. Alright, thanks. Bye.